Namaste, our dear friends. You are on the channel Spirit of Jatai with Alayoli, and today I um, I would like to share with you the article that I read by Alexander Redko um, uh, from the book of Cosmology of Dagons. Um, the material is quite um, complicated but worth it and I thought um, I couldn't find the um, translation and I had to do a little summary of that article and translate it in uh, on English so I can share it with you and uh, technically this guy was um, explaining the philosophy of Dagons. Who's, who are Dagons? Dagons is the, a little tribe in Africa, maybe like 600, 700 people in Mali, who lived independently for centuries and they don't have much of a connection with our world, so their um, development is different. and. Um, their knowledge is um, way more deeper than one would expect from the tr little tribe. Um, and uh, those people, they uh, believe that their ancestors had a contact with the higher civilization, with, with um, aliens maybe, not sure, but they have their own philosophy built on what they were taught by those people, um, I think they call them homos, and uh, it's their god, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So anyhow, so um, in this article, the author is using the quantum physics and the knowledge received from those dogons and trying to explain how we are connected, our consciousness connected to the higher realms. Um, so I'm going to just read a little bit from this article and uh, we'll discuss it. So um, the article starts with a story about one man, Ivan Listopadov, and the secret of his ex brain. <laughs> So technically, um, one surgeon in Khabarovsk in Russia tells the story of his uh, practice when he had to remove half of the brain of that young man, Ivan, due to the severe brain injury and se like brain damage. So um, from his words, the, the, the heavy object hit his his head and um, that one part of his brain was completely smashed and uh, beyond repair. So what they had to do, they removed half of his brain and he used the gluteal um, muscle to put in his head instead of the brain because the brain was so severely damaged they just removed it and placed that uh, gluteal muscle just to cover the space and um, n no one no surgeons would believe that one can survive this type of event but um, Ivan was the fighter and he would not give up so it took him only three months in the hospital to recover and back to his uh, somewhat normal self and um, he he was working in um, they call it BAM BAM I don't know if you know about that it's just a um, long um, railway that was covering pretty much all all territory of Russia and Siberia so he was one of the worker there and that's um, um, where he got injured uh, The author then said that um, they, they asked him to come back in six months for reassessment and see how he's recovering. And when he never showed up after six months, everyone assumed that this person did not survive and died at home. And um, 
one day he had to go to the management of that railway and um, consult one of their one of them and uh, he asked about that Ivan guy and he said I um, operated on him a little bit more than a year ago so I don't know if he's still alive or not and and the guy said yes oh gosh yeah he couldn't do his job so he went back to school and studied how to be an accountant uh, and doing a bookkeeping for us with a half brain right so um, and he's doing just fine so this guy um, eventually the, the surgeon found him and had a discussion with him and, and he was like asking him to come back so he can be studied and uh, Ivan said no I don't want to I don't want to do any follow-up I'm, I'm totally perfectly back to my normal self and I am happy with my life so I'm okay and uh, yeah so I know I've seen on TV before a few people like Ivan who had severe trauma to their brain and managed to survive and it's actually it's not quite common but it's actually amazing how those people can adapt with the half of the brain and and have somewhat normal life so here is the article after that it's um, after that story, it's um, the author is um, sharing his, his thoughts on what is the brain of the human. So what is the brain of the human? Can it think? Is it a subject or the object of our thinking? Is it generating information or just receiving information outside world? Why do we need it at all? Brain is the most important organ in our biological body and takes more than half amount of receiving oxygen and glucose of our body use. The mass of the brain is 2% of the whole body mass. Effectiveness of his function depends on its mass, but not depend on his mass, but on its shape and inner structure. Our brain is 20% less than a um, Cro-Magnon's head, and um, we consider it to be smarter. In cosmology of Dogons, and I, I just told you about Dogons, that it is a little tribe in Africa near Mali. Um, in their cosmology, they stated that brain of the human is a multinuclear biocomputer and computer cannot think so it is its work depend on the program installed it, its main job is to receive information and analyze it it is also regulate the functioning of our organs and our body um, it's a protective gear for our soul and spirit as well that's what they believe so let's see what's, what it is that we call brain. So n n neurons. So we have a mass, right? And, and uh, inside that mass we have lots of neurons. And um, neurons are main operational centers that able to take on any kind um, info mathematical operations we have more than a hundred billions of neurons in our head each neurons is independent center that is able to function as a mini computer separated each neuron will immediately start producing its own network that is why neurons can be looked at as an individual life cell contain it object it's quite interesting because i recently i was uh, watching one of the documentaries where the um, biologist would say that they started to experiment and they would cut a little bit of um, human brain and put it in a in a dish and it would start grow it's kind of um, a 
can freak someone out, but it's kind of cool that that's what's happening. And uh, they're still yet to find out what exactly going on in that dish, but they know that it's like a mini brain on its own. And, and it's really interesting, you know, the, the science behind it is, is quite fascinating. In a relationship with the axons, and you know axons, right? So the neurons are uh, like a little star with a long tail, and and that axon, that, that's the tail, is connected to the next neuron in line, and it's just like, it's like a necklace, you know, uh, that spires the information along. So that's how um, they're communicating. In a relationship with the axons, neurons are able to form very long net. <sighs> and if you uh, manage to untangle its net string, it can wrap Earth 68 times or go to the moon and back seven times. So, so can you imagine how long it is? And it's all like um, in here. In our brain it's quite interesting that is why our computer is able to um, that why is our computer is able to in here and uh, calculation and analyzing information our brain can fit in five billion books in my brain, I can fit five billion books. Wow. In this net, we constantly have 5.5 petabytes information circulating. I don't even know what's petabytes, but it sounds like a really huge amount of um, storage room. It is hard to imagine, but it is three million hours of constant viewing that equals to 300 years of non-stopping watching movies. So that's how much space we have. So we can watch movie non-stop for 300 years and it will, the, the brain will remember and fit everything in. We, we don't even live that long, but so it's three times or four times more space that one can fit in, in their lifetime. So that is just amazing. So our brain is not generating thoughts, but analyzing info from outside and stores them into files. Great. Each thought from the outside instantly creates new neuron conne connections. Our consciousness forms a hundred thousand thoughts daily, and for each neuron are forming pathways. For each thought, neuron are forming pathways. Besides our consciousness, we have cosmic information uh, fields and it that um, we are connected to. It is clusters of ideas and info from above that we are yet to learn and understand. There is a say, I just got a thought entered my mind or enter my head and it's actually very accurate. It is correct. Most of info and thoughts we receive from the outside, some are from our own field of consciousness, some are from planetary field of consciousness, and some are from the universe. That's what we need to focus on, you know, those, um, not just our own little world, but the planetary fields of knowledge and universal field of knowledge. That's what I think. Quite interesting. But our brain is unable to tell the difference between our own thoughts and thoughts from external fields. We think they are all our thoughts. That's another idea and another um, new 
way of thinking uh, because yes we do attach to what's going on in our head and we think that, that we produce everything that um, we think of but sometime you know sometime you you see a person in action and and we tell them what possessed you to do that or what were you thinking or why why did you think that was a good idea and and we suddenly go oh my god i don't know i don't know what happened to me i think i got possessed by some so probably that is when when you enter the negative field sometimes you can just go by someone who is into the dark cloud and you can catch that person's thoughts and they can enter and and then you just get possessed but but they their thought not your and you don't even know like later on you will be like i there is no way i could have come with that idea because it's not yours right it's it's just entered your head and i actually um uh, watched an interview with one guy um he stated that he is a channeler and and could uh, channel and connect with the higher spirits and he was um sharing his experience when when he was um either meditating or or um doing his uh, channeling and suddenly he the clear thoughts entered his mind and the thought was get up get the knife and go kill your kids this guy he was terrified by by that thought he jumped and he said no 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 i cannot do this so he was sharing that experience of his and i thought oh my god like that is scary so he believed that that thought was um placed in his head by one of the dark spirits and um yeah quite interesting um so but that will explain this article because sometime depend on our vibration we can access either higher um, frequency clouds of thoughts or information or we can enter something that is not as high and not as spiritual and actually very um, scary and damaging so I think that's what happened to that person and um, the, he definitely didn't kill anyone but he was brain enough to share that experience and he said it's never happened after that and it's never happened in any way but he was so scared of that thought entering his head that he actually needed to take some time off and, and think about that because he said that, that whatever came into my mind was not me I had no intention to do any harm and that was quite scary and he believed that um, it was from a, a darker spirit uh, it was it was thought placed into his head from um, some other place external right um, external field not his own because he said he was never uh, diagnosed or treated for any mental illness not before not after and uh, it actually um, never happened after that as he said but that was experience he probably will never forget so anyhow back to the article uh, we think they are all our thoughts how does it work so Dagon's cosmology I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing where Dagon's or Dagon's um, not sure how to say that the Doggins, I think Doggins, but um, not sure. In, so Doggins insist that our brain is biocomputer, and this computer only needs 10 watts of electricity. It's no more than your fridge light bulb, but main energy brain use um, uses what it's called prana. And prana is collected from the fields of a multi energies collected from the surrounding space. So that's what our brain uses instead. Um, the carriers of info 
is called quant. And that's from physics, we know that. Um, as Dagens believe, there are two types of quants, and they are the Faraday type of wave, chronoquant and logoquant. When they are in action, they collect, um, they call it chronof chronophaton and logophaton. So w when they're not active, it's chronoquant and logoquant, but they, when they're working, they call chronophaton and logophatons. And you probably know that information from the uh, physics from, from high school. First is energy, and the second one is information. In our brain, photon is an information carrier, when uh, biophotons are quants of lights. So biophotons, light and info, chronophotons, time and movement, and logophoton is information. Um, quite complicated, but yet if you, um, if you think about more, you can eventually understand that the, those are the, the many workers of our brain who are responsible for a certain type of work they do. Some of them carry that um, light of energy lights, some carry information, and some actually push that information as the force. So quite fascinating how that's all work. And more fascinating that that um, remote tribe, remote village, knew all this information many, many years ago. And um, yeah, biophotons, it's light. Enlightenment, or saying with round um, light nymph around their heads, is not just an art technique. It is increased number of biophotons in person's brain that radiates that light outward. Their neurons are filled with biophotons that generate lights. So for that reason, we always seen on, um, on icons that all the saints have that round nymph and, and it radiates light. So that is your biophoton. So when you get to the, to the state of enlightenment, like Buddha, Gautama Buddha did, that, that's, or, or, or Jesus. Uh, all the teachers, all the great teachers, they had so many biophotons, they, they were so connected that their brain literally was radiating light and for, rest, for the rest of people who witness uh, those teachers, they've seen light around their head. Is, isn't it great? Um, yeah, and um, biophotons generate light in our brain here. Chronophotons, energy carriers, and time, prana carriers. It is not just energy. This movement is clearing and updating the information in our archives, in the brain archives. It is stores new information from thin um, matter, um, body of the person. They store information into our sur um, info for our survival and um, our existence. So technically, um, they're updating the files. What's no needed or um, old uh, or need to be updated, it's updated and restored and um, we can pull it out anytime we need that information. Quite interesting. Um, so logophotons, it is very fast info delivery system. It consists files that are regular late work of our systems, like body systems. They regulate work of neurons as one system. And it is done by axons, which which is multi-layered channels inside of which travels the stream of information. So it just goes from one, one neuron to another through the axon. And it's, it's like a cable, like electrical cable. Um, 
that need isolation around it, like plastic isolation, because it fires like electricity all the time, right? It fires light, so it needs to be isolated. It, it's just like, wow, yeah, I'm so um, amazed by, by this article and by this information. I knew this from school, but now I'm looking at the same information from the different angle, from the connection to the higher levels, cosmic levels. <clears throat> the speed of infra traveling inside the axons is higher than the speed of light. Here you have it. <laughs> um, go figure how it all works, right? Um, Dogons insist that our own chrono and logophotons are able to communicate with external chrono and logophotons. So that, what that means, that means that the space above us, the universe, the cosmos, the planet, they have their own neuron system and our neuron system can communicate through our consciousness. They, they communicate with external worlds. And now um, I think when you are meditating, you are more open to it and uh, the information exchange faster because y you then suddenly just know. It happened to me a um, number of times when I was meditating. Um, suddenly I, I would talk to, to people or to my family about something that I don't think I would um, receive from the book or from my my this realm and um, now I know how it works because we are connected through neurons with the higher realms. Um, <clears throat> this is what the consciousness is. The connection with external chrono and logophotons of our brain with the info field of the planet and the universe field. Uh, this is called channeling. So when you are connected, either in meditation or some kind of spiritual ritual, you're channeling and you're connecting to the, the clouds of um, spiritual information, of the history of your ancestors, of the history about the higher beings, higher spirits. Um, an author of this article believes that our brain does not think, but analyzing and using the information above and around us. And that person, Alexander Retko, um, and it's from the book, The Cosmon Cosmology of Dogons. So if you're interested, I, um, and if you want to have more information, I suggest you just, um, download his books, download his articles, because um, he is actually quite active author and uh, um, his work is fascinating. So um, this is it and I uh, am glad that you are tuned in and um, was able to to listen th till the end of this video because that the material that um, um, in this video is very complicated I would say but uh, hopefully I um, managed to simplify it to, to the point that everyone can understand um, the part of quantum physics and how um, it's all connected with the spiritual realms and hopefully it will be very helpful for you and your spiritual development because if we are spiritually connected to the higher realms, we are um, better human beings. We have better morale, higher morale. We are caring people. We are able to love and uh, not only just love, uh, receive love and have that unconditional love to each other, to the planet, to every single um, bug or, or a flower that is on the planet because you feel that you are connected to everything and everything has that um, cloud of information and you can exchange it if you're tuned in. So it's a good practice because it will um, improve your life 
it will give you uh, much better knowledge and much more useful knowledge for for you so you can create that that um, spiritually developed place for yourself and for your family and for your friends for your country and for the planet stay connected with the planet stay connected with universe uh, i wish you all the best thank you for watching if you find it interesting share it with your friends um, maybe click on like or dislike if you didn't like that and uh, let's have a discussion about that write me a question and i will do my best to find the answer for you all see you next time namaste